Hi all. Today we will see how we can create a dynamic form by making use of Angular standalone components in Angular 14. For rendering today's dynamic form, we make use of two JSON files. One is the meta.json which will contain the structure of the form and second is the data.json which is used for binding the data to this form. So if you go to the meta.json, you can see different entries where we have a key called control type which will be used to define the type of control which we need to render in our form. So the different options are drop down, label, text input and checkbox. Also here we can define the order of the control which determines the order in which the control is displayed in the form. So similarly we have the data.json which will be mapping the key of that particular field. So in case the field supports data binding, it will have a key called key and the name of the key will be found here in the data.json. In this way we will be able to map this data to that particular field. So now let's go to our dynamic standalone application. So previously I had done a video on how to create a dynamic form by making use of Angular 13 components. So there we made use of the ng modules and all such things. But here in this application we will be making use of the standalone components alone. We won't be using any ng modules. So here our entry point will be the main.ts file. So if you go there you can see that we are making use of the bootstrap application function in order to bootstrap our application and instead of providing the app module we are making use of the app component and also since we need to make http calls from within our application we are importing the providers from the http client module using the import providers from function and once we have done this we will be able to inject http client within our application. So going to the app component which is our entry point. So here when we initialize the app component we are making two HTTP calls one to get the data.json and other to get the meta.json. So here you can see the code and once we receive the data and the meta what we do is we will be passing these as inputs to our dynamic form component. So if you check closely within our app component template, you can see that we make use of the ng if structural directive. So in order to build this component properly, we need to import the ng if directive. So here you can see that within the imports array of the app component standalone, we have imported the ngif directive which is currently standalone. So we need not import the common module. We just need to import the directive which we need to use in our component. Similarly, since we are making use of the dynamic form component, that is this particular tag app dynamic form, we can import this as well. One restriction is that whatever we import within this imports array, it should be a standalone so once we go into our dynamic form component, if you check the HTML, you can see that within this dynamic form component, we have a form which is basically a reactive form and we have a form group called form. And within this form, we are creating an ng for loop which basically loops through our metadata. So if we go to our meta.json, you can see that it is an array which consists of multiple entries, each entry corresponding to a control. So within our dynamic form component, we basically loop through these individual controls within the metadata and pass the control information that is this particular entry. So each entry 
will be passed to a single instance of the control component. So here we have created a component called the app control which accepts two parameters. One is the control metadata and other is the form. So since we are basically creating dynamic forms, we need to pass the reference of this form group to each of our child controls. So once we do that, we will be able to access all the details of the controls within this dynamic form component itself. So once we have looped through all the controls, we have a submit button called save, which basically just displays the content of the data, which is currently bound to our form. So the submit is handled by the on submit method, which is just stringifying the data from the current form. Here, if you look closely into our dynamic form HTML, you can see that the various dependencies which we use are one is the reactive form module within which we will have the form group and all those related things. Similarly, we also make use of the ng4 directive for looping through the controls and also we have the ng if directive which is used for hiding the display structure in case there is no data bound to the form. So since we are making use of the dynamic form component as a standalone component, we need to individually import the dependencies here within our imports. So we can import the ng if directive and the ng for directive. Each of these are standalone directives. But in the case of reactive form module, currently I couldn't find any individual standalone APIs. So I have imported the reactive form modules. But in case you are aware of how to import the individual components or directives from within the reactive form module, please let me know in the comments. And finally, we have the control component, which is the app control component, which we see here. And here the control component is also declared as a standalone component. One additional code which is present within the dynamic form component is how we set value for the form group. So here you can see the form group name is form. So this particular property, how we are setting it. So you can see that within our metadata service, which receives the metadata, it contains a public method called to form group. So within that, what we are doing is we will loop through each control which is present within the meta.json and in case it is not a label. So since the label is not a control which accepts in input value, we need not add them in the form control. But all the other controls like drop down, test input and checkbox, we need to create a form control for that particular field. Along with that, we create a entry within the form group, which will have the name as the key which we provided in the meta.json. That is, in case of this, it will be country. We make use of the initial value which is available within the data.json itself. In case it is not available, we will be initializing with empty. And in case the control is marked as required, so here in the case of first name, we have added the required as true. In case it is true, we will be adding the validator, that is validators.required will be added to our form control. So once we create all these form controls, we will be just adding that particular group into the form group. And this is how we create the new form group and assign it to our form property. So once we have done that, let's go to our control component. So I told that I had previously done a video which executes the same functionality by making use of the conventional modules and components. So if you go to the GitHub, here you can see that this is the control component. And within this, what I have done is 
I have basically added an NG switch and based on the control type, that is the type of the control, I have added different cases. So I have an app label component for the label, text input for the text input and so on. So since we are making use of the standalone components within our application, we can get rid of this particular switch case. So as you can see, creating this switch case can become quite cumbersome, especially when the type of controls keep on growing. So in today's example, what we will be doing is, we will be making use of the dynamic component creation. Since we, we are making use of the standalone components, all the dependencies needed by the component will be available within the imports of that component itself. So it is quite easy to create dynamic components. So here if you go to the HTML of our control component.html, you can see that there is only a single line which is basically an ng container with a template reference variable. I have given the name as placeholder. Now we will go to our control component and I have added a view child which basically queries that template reference variable and I am reading it as a view container ref. In our control component what we do is I have created a control.constants so the ng switch we saw within the old example that is this one I have converted it into a simple constant it is a key value pair within which the key will be the control type and value will be a loader function which basically does a dynamic import and within this dynamic import we provide the path to the corresponding component. So in case of drop down we have a drop down component created within the controls folder and we just provide that within our dynamic import. So why we need to create a loader function instead of just passing the text alone is that the dynamic import does not accept variables like in case you provide a variable and you assign the string to that then the dynamic import won't work it needs a static url it needs at least a partial static url even that is not supported by the default angular webpack 5 configuration so for that we need to provide the static string itself then make use of a function which returns this particular import from that component so similarly i have given a loader for each of the different control types and once we have done this we can go to our control component and what we do is just we get the control type from this particular control and call the loader function which is this function so we basically call the dynamic import since it returns a promise we make use of the then block and within this we will be able to get the module from which we will be getting the default so one more thing i have done within our components that is the drop down component or the checkbox component is that i have created all these as default classes since these files contain only a single export one advantage of using this default is that when we do a dynamic import the key which is available within this module it will be named as default so in case you don't give the default keyword you basically need to provide the name of that class itself so since we export it as a default class we can make use of a generic name that is default and access the component class from within the module so once we get the component class we can make use of the create component method within our view container ref and pass the component class. The return of this particular create component is a component itself. So we get the component reference and we have a property called instance to which we can attach the input that is needed by this particular component. So as you see here, the inputs which are needed by the different controls that are the meta and the form. 
So we basically just attach the value for these properties to the instance property of the component. So once we do that, the data will be automatically available within the component as inputs. So once we do that, let's go to our application and run it. So let's open the developer tools. So here you can see that our dynamic form is getting rendered. So this is the label component, text input, again a label, text input. Similarly, it goes on. This is a label and a drop down. And here we have a checkbox. So we can edit all these values. And once we press on submit, that is a save button. You can see this particular data which is currently bound to this form getting displayed here. In case we modify any of the control data, so here and just renaming this label as city. When we refresh, you can see that this particular label will be changed to city. So here you can see that the label automatically got changed. In case we need to modify any controls within the form, we can just modify that within the meta.json and it will be automatically reflected within our form. So one advantage of making use of this standalone component is that since we load these components dynamically using the dynamic import, you can see that each of these component is created as a separate JS file and hence the main bundle size will be considerably reduced and it will enable to make our applications faster. So hope you are able to get a good idea about how we can create a dynamic form by making use of the standalone components in Angular 14. See you soon. Thank you.